Life is hard enough as it is, but then to try to maintain a positive attitude during challenging times can be really difficult. In today's episode, I'm going to give you a couple of nuggets to help you to, well, gear up for those challenging times. Let's go. Welcome, ladies, to the Life Mastery for Women podcast. I'm Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind, your host. This is where we go to learn to master our life one nugget at a time. Hey, ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you maintaining a positive attitude during challenging times. If you are not maintaining a positive attitude, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Now, today, I think I'm going to give you four nuggets. Now, I might come up with a couple of more during the talk, but uh, I do want to say that I really get it. Life can be really, really, really hard, whether money or career, your relationships, your health, things are declining. The older you get, it's like the worse it gets, unless you know how to handle it. And it isn't even how to handle the situation. I mean, I talk about that all the time, but it really is about loading yourself up with those tools ahead of time before the challenge. I've heard of this quote before is like, life is a game, learn the rules. And now the problem is we don't really get the rules. We have to figure it out the hard way. However, I did like the adage, if that's the right terminology, but I did like the idea of life as a game. Now, all of us play games. We, we play all different kinds of games from Xbox to PlayStation to our phones to our tablets to our PCs. And But yet we don't take life like a game. We don't treat it in that same way. And I want to invite you to consider that. So think of a game that you play where you are a, um, you're controlling a character. Now, just recently, I did a podcast episode on that very thing is thinking of your life as this game. There's a soul version of you that is the controller. Then there is the human version of you that is the actual, um, the, the actual character in the game, the avatar in the game. And Every time you you come to a level in a game, when you first learn something new, you download download a game and you spend some time learning how to play and they show you, you know, they have the little hand that swipe this and do this and here's how you access your your weapons and here's how you access your health and here's, you know, all the all the parts and pieces to the game. And it doesn't take you long to get to level 1, right? And then level 2 and then pretty soon you're on level 20. And things are getting harder and harder. Well, here's here's how I want you to apply this to life is that as you move along through life, you pick up new skills and awarenesses and ideas and how to do things a little bit differently. And when you begin to level up, you take those skills with you, right? And so life is no different. We get different challenges. You know, if you if you're a parent and you have kids or you're in a relationship, when you're dealing with people like that, intimate relationships or your children, is there's always something. There's always a new challenge, a new a new way to do something, right? Your kids are babies, and so you have to learn what cry means what and changing diapers and, you know, bottle feeding or breastfeeding or whatever you're doing. And, and then regular feeding, and then, oh my gosh, now they can walk, and holy moly, and then now they're outgrowing their clothes, and now they're speed forward, they're 13, and they're wanting all this independence. And you have to constantly adapt. If you're a good parent, and I, if you're listening to this, you want to better yourself. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast otherwise. You want to be the best version of you. And you're always learning new things. And as you're learning new things, you're bringing those skills with you. Well, life is like that. So I want you to think about as you sit back in your life and just kind of contemplate for a second. Stop doing and start being. If I sit quietly and I just kind of quick take a quick glance at my life and I go, okay, here's my life in a snapshot and here's my challenges. Each one of those challenges is a challenge like in the game. If you are a, a character in a game and let's say you have to fight these bad guys, when you, they first show up, you have to understand what they are and what they're doing and, and how, they, how they will fight you and what they're capable of. And, okay, they're flying. Oh, wait, now they can land and now they can run towards me, right? I have to adapt. And the more we can 
analyze the actual challenge, the more we learn right straight off the bat. The more I go, okay, so they're flying, so now I need to do, I need to act like this, or I need to do this skill, or I need to use this weapon. Okay, well, oh, now they can get on the ground. Okay, so I'm going to jump, or I'm going to shoot, but I'm, then I'm going to back up, and I'm going to hide behind these rocks, or, and then I'm going to shoot, or, you know what I'm saying? So all of this, you, you then, you tackle this challenge in a whole new way. Life is like that. Now, the only difference is that we're in the middle of it. And of course, we can't fly and we shouldn't be using weapons to solve our problems. But but when you stand back and you look at the challenge is to analyze what is going on. And then we start to bring in skills that we have that will allow us to work through this challenge. So I have four ideas. They're not really steps, but they're ideas to help you to, let's say, tune into different solutions to help you overcome the challenge. We don't always have to get our skills out of a book or a class or a course. We can get our skills intuitively. We can get solutions to our problems intuitive, sorry, intuitively. And as we get those solutions to our problems intuitively, then we have to learn to trust them. And so, of course, my my number one is to begin, well, my number one is to see life as a game. You are here to have an experience. You are here to have an experience as a human with a soul. So your soul is holding the controller and has you going on a path. The human version of you is the version in the game. That is the avatar that, that the soul is always trying to level up. So every time we level up, it's because of a challenge. We we beat a boss at the end of this level and now we have new skills and then we move on to another level, another challenge, but we take those skills with us. And as we take those skills with us, we become better and better and better and more equipped. That's what we're talking about. Those challenges are going to be there no matter what, no matter what you do. You could sit and you can, you can do nothing for the rest of your life and just drone on in your life and, and go to your job and go home and maintain your relationship, but there's no excitement and there's no life inside of you. And you slowly start to die inside. And when there's not a new challenge for you to step up your game, depression sets in. And you're like, what is the whole purpose of life? The purpose of life is just like this game. It is to continue to move on, to level up, to overcome challenges. And as you overcome challenges and you learn these new skills, new challenges are right around the corner, just like a game. Nobody would play a game that didn't have challenges in it as you're exploring different worlds. I have Hogwarts Legacy, and it's a Harry Potter game. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, and I love this game. And it's not live. Like, there's no, I'm, I can't play online with other people. Like, I can't have my son and his wife or my daughter-in-law play, and and I can engage with them. There, there are no other people to really engage with. And I can run around this world all day long. And for a while, it would be kind of fun to explore Hogsmeade and, and the castle and the apothecary and go to all these different places and go down into the forest. And all that's fun and exciting. However... It's going to get boring really fast. And then eventually what? I'm going to stop playing the game. Have you stopped playing the game? I hope not. And if you're listening to this, I really, I really encourage you to get in, get in your life and start creating your life. Start making a mess of things. Start doing things that you've always wanted to do. Create your list, right? Get your bucket list out. So back to this. The very first step is to think of life as a game. See a challenge, back up from that challenge, you go, okay, so this is the game. There's a challenge here. This is requiring me to, to up-level and to learn some new skills. How am I going to do that? Okay, so that's the first one is shifting your awareness, your perspective towards life as a game. The next is to make it fun. Encourage other people to join, whether your friends, your family, your kids, whatever. We've even we've even encouraged our kids to help with overcoming challenges that had to do with them. You know, Cameron's Cameron's our youngest. He's fourteen now, and a couple months will be fifteen. And he loves his independence. I want to go out there and kind of make a mess of things. I want some independence. I just want to hang out with my friends. We hear that all the time. Well, we as parents, you know, we get nervous. You know, we, some of his friends are sort of finding their way into some trouble and they're starting to experiment with some things. And so it's making us nervous, you know? And, and, uh, so we asked Cameron, it's like, so what would you do? And he goes, well, I don't know. I said, well, think about it. 
you know, we care very much about you and we, we want you to have the best experience that you can, but we also want you to stay on this path because it scares us. We're scared, you know, and we want to trust you and believe you and we want you to have fun. And he'll, and he'll, he'll engage a little bit, you know, with that. Of course, he doesn't have a, a very keen perspective because he's never been a parent and he's only 14 and he only wants what he wants. But bringing him to the table sometimes gives us some really fun ideas. And so if you're having relationship issues, bring other people in for a new, fresh perspective, just as if you were to, you know, locate the guidebook within your game. Like, okay, how do I overcome these guys? Like, what are, what are their weaknesses? And do I have that tool? And I might say, hey, you need to go visit this, you know, this other world, overcome this objective, get this tool, and now you can fight this boss, right? There's all different ways that we can make things fun in our life. And I encourage you to do that. So that's the second one. The third one is meditate daily, 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 daily. Even if it's five minutes, put it in the forefront. Put your put your phone, uh, give your um, give yourself some sort of an alarm, uh, and and bring in a meditation. Do five minutes where you just get centered, you just get grounded, and you just get connected. As you get connected, things will start showing up in your life that will help you to overcome this problem. You know, Amy and I always decide. All right, you know, let's say we have some big, huge snafu with Cameron, and oh my gosh, or the principal, or you know, things are happening, or whatever, and we get upset and we want to have this big, giant, long conversation. We go, okay, listen. We're going to get grounded right now and we're going to connect to source energy. And it's just a process that we do. And then we ask for a solution. Give us a solution to this problem. There's been plenty of times where Cameron has come around with some with some big plan. Like, for instance, this summer, he's like he and his buddy wanted to take these two girls to the beach. And Cameron was trying to date this one girl and the other boy was dating or currently dating that girl's friend. And so the four of them wanted to go to the beach. Well, that kind of set off some alarms in us. And we're like, oh my God, you know, he's trying to go to the beach with these girls and what's he going to do? And there's no parents and blah, blah, blah. And so we start kind of freaking out and like now talking about it and, and trying to think about it and trying to, you know, over... <laughs> <laughs> over dramatize it anyway so we're like you know what let's just sit with this for a minute let's get grounded let's get connected and see what we can come up with because we know that he wants to have you know have fun with his friends you know he's telling us he's not interested in sex he's just like but of course as you're rolling your eyes all boys say that right until they just can't handle it any longer anyways so what we ended up doing is we kind of put it on the back burner for a while we got connected and we got grounded and we put it on the back burner and lo and behold that they ended up not going because the girls couldn't go. And so we would have fret about that for I don't know how long and it actually worked in our favor. Now, of course, that only buys us a little bit of time, but it gives us kind of this relaxation that we don't have to decide in this moment because usually Cameron you know, comes to us Tuesday night and says, can we go tomorrow? You know, Can we go to the beach tomorrow? And we are moved into this big impulsive decision, which... I think it's just teenagers. So if you are able to just begin a meditation practice, what that does is allows you to get centered. It puts you in a state of balance and it starts to build a level of confidence that you can rely on other things to help you solve problems. And as we move through life, we begin to trust. We begin to trust in this innate ability to connect to source energy, to get grounded to Mother Earth, and then we're able to find some peace in those challenges. It doesn't mean we don't have to overcome the challenge, because like I said, we just bought ourselves some time. Next summer, that's going to be happening again. Cameron's going to want to go with his buddy to the beach with two girls, and we're going to need to to figure out as parents how we want to best handle that. But as we begin a meditation practice, it's really nice because it allows us to stand in a firmer, more confident space and a more peaceful space. When it comes to challenges, typically, for me anyway, the reason I'm like, oh my gosh, I just don't want any more challenges. This is just so freaking irritating, whatever. And it's like, because it it makes me so emotional and it puts me in such a mental state. But as I'm meditating more and more and more and connecting, this challenge literally just becomes that. And I go, okay, what do I got to do to overcome this? And step number four, step number four is self-care, taking care of yourself. Now, this is taking care of yourself physically, feeding your body the nutrients that it deserves so it can be the very best version it can be, 
fueling our body helps us to maintain that calm, helps us to maintain that emotional state as well as a mental state when a challenges arise. I can't tell you there's times, you know, I love sugar and here come the holidays. So I mean, you know, we made ho- we made Halloween cookies and I'm like, I, you know, how many can I eat before I get a stomach ache? That's like my barometer, right? So I eat cookies all the time. And I'm like, you know, but cookies make me feel kind of agitated. Like I start feeling a little bit jittery and anxious. Well, I'm not going to be in a very good emotional space if a challenge shows up to me from there. So, But if I am eating fruits and vegetables and lean meat and drinking water throughout the day, I feel more grounded and I feel more present. When a a challenge arises, I'm there, I'm in it, and I'm ready. So self-care, filling and fueling my body with the right foods. Getting exercise is another one. When I stop moving my body, I'm working too much, I'm in front of the computer, I'm too much sitting, I start getting irritated. If a challenge shows up, I'm I'm gonna enter that challenge arena with irritability. I need to move my body. Moving my body and and working out, lifting weights, um, going outside, walking and walking the dogs, walking on the treadmill, riding my bike, all of these things get me centered and get me grounded to Mother Earth so I can gain her support. When a challenge shows up, I'm ready to go. That's why I always call us like women warriors. We have to prepare ourselves mentally, physically, and emotionally as challenges arise. We can't just lay around and wait for something to show up or lay around and hope nothing shows up. That is not a life to live. So I hope this finds you well. I hope that these these steps are something that you can start to take a part in and start to kind of build yourself up to prepare for those challenges. And knowing that our lives are always seeking expansion, our spirit is here for this human experience Let's give it to it. But in the meantime, let's prepare ourselves like true warriors, getting our body in shape, getting our mind in shape, and managing our emotions. And as you can do this and and managing your emotional state in that positive way, you're going to find challenges are not only fun, but you begin to look forward to them. Wow, that may have felt like a lot of information in today's episode, but if you're looking for support and a deeper knowledge of what we talked about today, then let's connect. You can learn more about how I work and how you can work with me. Send me an email to the meditation room tc at gmail.com, subject line, let's talk. And in the meantime, you can join my online Facebook community, Lady Rising, and mention that you came in through the podcast. I look forward to supporting you and connecting with you there.